Okay, so where I left off, I was playing with different eye shapes. This eye shape is created with a border, which gives me the, the white highlight already. But the problem is it limits what I can do. It can only ever output in this one way where I've used a shape tool to make an ellipse. You can see the ellipse highlighted in blue, and then it's just outputting on each side of that ellipse with the same number of pixels that I've set under my border settings. So nine pixels on each side. Instead, what I want to do is be able to cut my ellipse shape out from the larger ellipse so I can actually vary the placement, right? So if I wanted to cut out like that, where it was a little thicker on the bottom, a little thinner on top, which is what I think I want, if I subtract that shape from the border vector shape underneath, it doesn't work the way. I intend. Come on. Just want to select both. Sometimes you can just draw a square and select them both. There we go. So if I subtract one from the other, it's doing weird things that I can't quite control or understand. Try to make it a little bit more clear by maybe making this one white. And then selecting both the border and this. Now why it's going to give me something weird that I can't understand like that is because the computer only knows where the anchors are. The computer doesn't know what is being uh, overlapped in terms of pixels. So the pixel is just something computers outputting. The anchors are what you are, is the data you're giving to the vector program. So if I change this to a fill instead, that's actually the shape it gives me, which is not what I wanted. So instead, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm going to use my sketch underneath. I'm gonna make a solid ellipse. I realized I can go a little bit bigger than I thought. Go ahead and make it black. And then for the time being, I'll take the opacity down. And I'll do another ellipse. Slightly varied shape, slightly varied placement. This time I'll make it white just to see clearly. Then I can turn the one behind it, fully opaque. See if I like how that looks without my sketch. Yep, that reads well, even at a low scale. So now I have to subtract one from the other. Hold down Shift on both of them. And now when I subtract, it will give me what I expect. So now this is one shape. because all of the anchor points on the inside and the outside are what it, what is being um, plotted and understood. Then I can select it as a whole, copy it, paste it, and use it in repetition on this side. Okay, now to finish it off, I wanna unlock all of my layers my different paths, and I want to go through and make sure they're all 100% black. Because remember, they will be kind of whatever the last color you used was. And I don't even need to know exactly what they are in order to check them. I just want them all to be 100% black. Now I can also try to batch select. I'm not actually sure that this works. And then select the same color for all of them, but that might speed up some time. 
So now that everything is fully at that 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 hex code, everything is solid black completely. And my sketch is turned off, not deleted, but turned off, so it's not showing. Then I want to export it as an SVG. Comes in as untitled, right? Bring it into my folder. Replace the old one. So now you see my untitled SVG. If I preview it, just like we test GIF animations, if I preview it in a web browser, you see the sketch is invisible anymore, even though it's encoded in the image. And if I open it up in a vector program, that sketch would still be there. Now I just have a perfectly clean cutout black shape logo. It doesn't, I don't know, this looks like a slightly different black. Aha, it is. So testing it is good before you upload it into Canvas. I can't tell if those are solid black or not. And then I can see little points there. All things which can be corrected as I'm finishing it up. I'm just rounding all the corners where there are corners, where I use straights. Okay, let's see my test, see if there's anything else. Take care of those three. It's a little awkward there, but I can live with it. I think I like the unevenness of that curve because it suggests a side burn, a side, yes, a side burn and, a, uh, and an ear. I think I like how these are offset because it suggests horn rimmed glasses. Ah, I'm missing a cutout there. So let me check the color of these. That's good. That's good. All right, so now I still need my sketch. So I'm going to take this one's opacity down. And I need just to cut out that little bit. And for this, I'm just going to use a straight rectangle. And it's actually trickier than it looks to get this right, because I want to make sure it fits exactly within that space that I've left. So I'll keep that aligned and then put it in. But will that make sense with the top of my glasses? No, so now I'm going to bring this down exactly vertical so that it does start to connect. Right, and then I'm going to change that to white, see how it looks before I subtract it. Take the background, put it back to 100% opacity. Turn off the sketch. See what changes need to be made. I need to make it a little bit narrower because my eyebrow, my other eyebrow is bigger. So maybe something like this. Yeah, and I think that reads the way I want. And just because I'm being really specific, I noticed that this curve just felt slightly off in the preview, just right there. It's just an anchor point that's actually probably not needed. So I'm going to see if I can get rid of it. 
and instead express that with just the curves that exist. Because often simplicity is best. That feels a little thick. So remember you can select multiple anchors by holding down shift and then you can move them both. And then they move more proportionally together as well. All right. I'm losing a little bit of the verticality then of that side. So there's all these concerns. Maybe I do actually need the other anchor point to bring out this side, but then by revisiting it, hopefully evened out those curves a little. Oh, I know what to do. Let's round it. So as in all art, there's a lot of subjectivity. You kind of play with it until you're happy. And then ultimately you finish. All right, so I'm going to make sure I export it as an SVG. Oh, it's good it gave me that preview because I forgot to subtract this shape from the one behind. Otherwise, I would have a white shape embedded in my vector. So now it is subtracted. So now when I export it, you'll see that it's all a floating cut out of black shapes. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, I've saved it as an SVG. I want to put that SVG and keep it safe. That is my vector file. It's going to become important for when we color it. It's the latest one I did. I'm going to save it into my assignment six folder. I can test it by looking at it in a web browser. And the only imperfections I should see are the spots and hairs that are on my computer screen, because a vector is as clean as it can be. The curve should feel like what I want. And this, this works pretty well. Okay, now how do I upload it? I'm going to output it as a PNG. So I export it, but this time as a PNG, and then I have to pick, actually, no, I don't need to, Never mind, Because the problem is if I export it as a PNG from vector, it's gonna force me to pick a pixel resolution. And I don't want that. I wanna keep it as a scalable image. So when I go to PhotoP, I can bring it in as a vector. 